And it's not just young women at risk, it seems. Uh, last year, almost a quarter of victims were male. Well, this is the incredibly heartbreaking story of one woman who managed to escape after being forced into an arranged marriage when she was just 17. I remember my father saying to my, to my uncle before they, the day they left, you know, whoever wants to marry her, just, you know, whoever wants to just give her away. The hardest thing for me was seeing my parents going to a car and leaving me. And I was hugging onto my brother and I was begging him not to let me go. And it's that, it's that memory that, that always haunts me. The fact that my family left me there. My marriage was horrendous. It was really bad. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. The physical mental abuse, it was really, really bad. From a girl that was really bubbly and full of energy, I became this person that I totally shut down. I was treated like a slave. I wasn't allowed to go out anywhere. I wasn't allowed to call my family. I'm lucky to be alive. Let's talk more about this. Uh, Amy Cumming, head of the government's forced marriage unit, is with us. Uh, morning, Amy. And uh, Anita Prem, founder of the uh, Freedom Charity, which provides uh, advice and support for victims. Uh, like that young lady we've seen in the VT there, and I believe she's become an ambassador for, for the charity. She's helping us going into schools and spreading the message on forced marriage. And actually, if you do nothing about it, if you are forced into marriage, what the consequences are. I mean, the lady in the VT, she has a success story now because She's very successful in what she's done, but she's had to fight horrendous things to be where she is. How, and she's still suffering 12 years on. How rare are people like her to have got to the position where she is? Well, rare to have escaped from it, um, but actually for someone in that situation to have come out, that's incredibly rare. People mm. for it to happen to is a very common thing, actually. Mm. It's much more common than we actually know mm. about. It is terrifying, isn't it? Because it must be such a sort of intimate betrayal, as you said, when she saw her parents pulling away. Very hard to, to, to deal with that psychologically, I would imagine, and very hard for you guys to step in because you're stepping right into the centre of family life and, and a particular cultural sensitivity too. Absolutely. I mean, we know it can be incredibly difficult for a young person to admit mm. that they're going to be forced into marriage or that a friend might be forced into marriage. They're under enor enormous emotional, often physical pressure as well. So our message is, this is difficult, we know that, but please come forward and ask for help. Staying silent is not the answer and, and we want to support you and to protect you. What can the government do? What is your legal power? What can you practically do to save youngsters going into the marriage and help those who are trapped get out? Well, the Forced Marriage Unit runs a public helpline. It's open five days a week, nine to five, and we offer a whole range of support and advice to victims from just talking the situation through and making them aware of what their rights are and what their choices might be, all the way to advising them on something like a forced marriage protection order or actually offering assistance. So you can through get that. You overseas. can if you fear it. You can get protection which prevents your parents doing yes, it. Yes, you can, and we can offer support mm. on that when people come forward. It seems like the battle here is to try to convince the women that it's okay, they can get in touch without living in fear and fear for their safety and repercussions of them doing just that. How difficult a battle is that? It is a really difficult battle and, you know, forced marriage with young people is child abuse. But one of the things is about an education programme, about, you know, the summer campaign that's been launched today that the Foreign Office have launched and Freedom Charity have launched as well. And it's talking to young people directly and saying, if, you know, if you're in trouble or your best friend is in trouble, name the key warning signs to look out for and what can be done to help you. And you know, often someone is tricked into a marriage, they're going away because they're told they're going to maybe a family wedding and not knowing it's their wedding and they're getting... And, and you're moving with the times, to, and, uh, to not technologically speaking as well, the phone app, I believe. That's yes, available. that's right. That's coming out later on in the summer. We have a 24-7 helpline and text line because not everyone can get to the phone. And we deal with every call as if it's a last chance call. Mm -hmm. It might be their only yeah. chance to get in contact. Yeah. with either the Foreign Office or with charities like Freedom. Well, I'm sure it's good to know, there could be well be people watching that are fearing the situation. It's good to know that they have rights, they have power, there is someone to turn to. So thanks very much Absolutely. for highlighting that again. Thank you very much indeed. Should we have a look at some front pages this yeah. morning? Uh, it's All just uh, creeping up to quarter past yeah. seven. Where's the time go? Um, so this is the front page of the Daily Mirror. They've